So if you didn't know, my aquascape for my shell dwellers totally failed because they ended up digging up the entire thing. And then plus the high concentrations of African cichlid salt ended up killing all of the plants. Great. So I figured I'd try again, but this time with marine salt. No, no, I'm not going full salt water. I'm doing brackish water, which is like a mix of fresh and salt water. It sounds a little scary, but my boss Zenzo from Dazawa Tanks says that Unlike reef tanks, it, you don't have to be exact with the measurements of the salt because in brackish environments, they're used to really heavily fluctuating water parameters. In fact, since I have soft water, I'm already adding seachem equilibrium minerals all the time to help the plants grow. So I figured this can't be that much different, right? After the horrible task of having to catch all the shell dwellers, which you can watch that short video over here, it's time to redo the scape. Now, the nice thing is that African cichlid tanks and brackish tanks are similar in that they both have higher pH and GH. So I was able to use the same substrate that aragonite sand, because that helps to keep those parameters higher, as well as the same equipment, the heater, the sponge filters. And then once I had dug out all of the hardscape, the petrified wood that I used before, I kind of set them up in two separate islands on the two ends of the tank. And that way they would kind of help to hide the equipment I had there. Now what plants should I use? Previously, I had floating water sprite, which absolutely melted in the high pH and GH. So I need something that can survive in brackish water, which as you know, most plants don't like salt. <laughs> now there's this great article on Tumblr, which I will link in the description for all these different plants that supposedly do well in brackish water and the specific gravity they can withstand. But I also talked to, again, Zenzo. He has personally experimented with many of these plants and he said really the only thing that survived has been mangrove trees and java fern, which I don't really want to grow a tree in my nano tank. I mean, this is a 20 gallon long technically, but java fern I can do. So I ended up ordering four pots of java fern, which split out into eight plants. And then I had this idea to use plant weights on the bottom of the bunches and just kind of sink them down. But eventually I found out once I added the animals, they completely ran them over and tipped them. So I just kind of wedged them in between the rocks so they'd stay there. Java fern is like a classic beginner low light plant. So I just got a easy plant LED as well as easy green fertilizer to grow them. The caveat is that Zenzo said, you know, they grew up in freshwater, so I'm gonna have to slowly acclimate them over the course of two to three months so that they get used to kind of a low end brackish water uh, level. Now that the scape is done, it's now time for my personal fun part, which is researching the animals. I personally am not familiar with the brackish world, like what species you can keep, much less their care requirements. I mean, I'm at the level of, how do you even keep a brackish aquarium? So thankfully there is a very helpful aquarium co-op article, which I will link down below on how to set up and maintain the correct salt levels. And then it had like some recommendations of beginner friendly brackish animals. I also checked out a book called Brackish Water Fishes by Neil Monk, which was super helpful overview. After kind of looking through all the animals, I decided on bumblebee gobies. They only get to about one inch, which is perfect size for the 20 gallon. They are gobies, an oddball fish, which I love seeing their quirky little behaviors. And I really like the coloration of the four bands and the kind of bumblebee color. I think it'll be cool. Unfortunately, an unexpected problem I had no idea what's going to happen is, and it makes sense, but brackish animals are really hard to source. Like they're not as popular and therefore they're not as available in the aquarium trade. And so all this research I did for finding the perfect animals to stock my tank, they were kind of, my dreams are going down the tube. But thankfully I saw that Dan's fish located in Wyoming had some ocelot bumblebee gobies. So not quite the type I was looking for. It's kind of more of a variegated striping. Another mm, scary thing is it's not like an official species, recognized species. So I don't know if they're full freshwater or brackish or what. All I have is what the company told me, which is they use fresh water that's filtered from their local river, which has extremely, extremely hard uh, water parameters. So that's what I'm kind of going off of. But I was really impressed by their customer service. They were very um, prompt with the responses. Each of the fish came individually packaged, which was unbelievable. They all survived. And 
I cannot tell you how much I love these guys. They are so cool, like really derpy behavior. They're constantly like just hopping around and uh, sticking to the glass sometimes. If one gets too close to another, they'll like growl at each other and chase them off. Like I absolutely love them. I fed them live baby brine shrimp and because they're slightly translucent, you can totally see their big fat bellies full of pinkness. I mean, absolutely adorable. I wasn't planning on breeding them, but then I saw the cover of that Brackish Fish book and it had Bumblebee Gobies laying eggs inside of the same snail shell that you use for shell dwellers. So of course I had to get some snail shells, put them in the aquarium and we'll see what happens. I'm still working on balancing the nutrients and lighting for the java fern. So to help out with the algae, I got some algae eaters, some red onion nerite snails to help scrub the walls, as well as one jumbo sized mono shrimp to help clean up not only algae on the leaves, but also clean up kind of the excess food that the bumblebee gobies tend to leave behind. Now, I have space for one more species. So I'm thinking figure eight puffer or Indian dwarf mudskippers. What do you guys think? If I get the puffer, the pros are I'm not gonna have to rescape the whole thing, but I will have to get rid of the invertebrates because he'll probably go after them. If I get the dwarf Indian mudskippers, I'll have to completely rescape it so that they have an area of land to climb on, but I will be able to keep the inverts. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Otherwise, take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.